Good morning, and happy Earth Day to all of you. It's been 40 years since Senator Gaylord Nelson of Wisconsin created Earth Day to focus America on our responsibility to care for the planet. The year of the first Earth Day also marked the birth of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and it launched an era of commitment to better protect the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land we call home. We passed landmark legislation such as the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and the Toxic Substances Control Act to fulfill this commitment. In Rhode Island, organizations such as Save the Bay went to work cleaning our coastline and promoting conservation. And leaders such as Senators Claiborne Pell and John Chafee helped put our ocean state at the forefront of the environmental movement. That was 1970. Now we bear the responsibility to carry on this important work. We have more to do on long-standing issues of coastal pollution and the cleanup of old industrial sites. We face a new generation of environmental challenges, climate change, warming oceans, disappearing coastlines, and we need to pursue energy independence for our country. I'll continue working to make progress in the Senate on these issues, but today I want to hear from you. What environmental issues are important to you? I've been collecting questions and comments throughout the week from Rhode Islanders concerned about our environment, and I encourage you to continue sending questions throughout the webcast to earthdaychat at whitehouse.senate.gov. Matt, what's our first question this morning? First question comes from Katie, who is curious how the Patuxent River and the Bay have been affected by the recent flooding. She's also curious how long the cleanup will take. Oh, hi, Katie. That's a very, very good question. Um, I had the chance to uh, spend a lot of time in Rhode Island during the recess, during the flooding, and uh, going all around the state looking at the different places where there was substantial damage, talking to families and business owners. Uh, I asked uh, Janet Napolitano, the Secretary uh, of Homeland Security, who oversees the whole federal emergency management operation, to come in. And Governor Kachiri was kind enough to take us out in a helicopter to oversee the damage from above. And one of the most striking things from that trip was looking down at Narragansett Bay and seeing how brown and turbid and filled with refuse the bay was. Usually when you fly over it, it's quite clear. It's blue, sparkling, uh, but not after this flooding. An enormous amount uh, of silt and other materials from our rivers got washed down and into the bay. I've been in touch with Kurt Spaulding, who's our environmental uh, protection administrator for Region 1, and he and the Rhode Island DEM are right now evaluating what the damage has been. Uh, the worst situation was, is likely to come from the scouring up uh, by the powerful waters of chemicals that have long lain dormant uh, under the uh, muddy bottoms of the rivers. Uh, contamination from our industrial heritage many, many, many years ago. So they're tracking that to see how it goes. Uh, the bay was largely closed to shellfishing immediately afterwards, but it started to reopen, which is a sign of the resilience of the bay and of, of Mother Nature. And it looks like we're coming back, but there's no specific date yet, and our environmental uh, folks are looking at it carefully. Good question, and I appreciate it. Our next question comes from Karen, who says she's concerned with the Obama administration's record on environmental issues. Can you offer your opinion on the actions he and administration officials have taken to protect the environment? I sure can. I've been working very closely uh, with the Obama administration uh, from my position on the Environment Public Works Committee. Uh, the first thing is that the stimulus bill showed a really profound uh, commitment to the environment, uh, particularly with respect to energy issues. It's probably the largest single investment in clean and renewable energy in the history of our country. And that is a re remarkable step and a very important focus for the Obama administration as it tried to rebuild jobs uh, coming out of the economic disaster uh, that the president inherited. He's also worked enormously hard on climate change. Uh, from the visit to Copenhagen, which got agreements on carbon reductions from 80% of the world's producers uh, of carbon, or I should say the producers of 80% of the world's carbon production, to be more uh, exact, to his uh, strong pursuit of uh, climate change legislation uh, in the Senate. We've passed a strong climate change bill out of the Environment and Public Works Committee, and now Senator Kerry is trying to draw together Republican support so it can pass in, in bipartisan fashion. 
uh, to strengthening the EPA. You may recall that uh, under President Bush, uh, when the EPA sent over to the White House a notice that the science indicated that carbon pollution required uh, that action be taken under the Clean Air Act, the White House refused to open the email so that it wouldn't trigger the legal consequences uh, of having that information. Uh, those sorts of games don't exist any longer. Lisa Jackson is a, a tough and smart and fair administrator, and she is working hard to make sure that EPA, through its regulatory powers, uh, does what it needs to do. So from my perspective here in Washington, I've really seen a complete 180 in the executive branch of government on climate change and environmental issues, and it's been very welcome. We've received an email live uh, during the course of this conversation from Robert, who wants to know if you specifically believe that global warming is real, and is it an imminent threat that's driven by the burning of fossil fuels? I do believe that it is uh, very real and uh, that it is an urgent problem. We don't exactly know where the tipping point comes, where the carbon pollution, uh, that fossil fuel uh, burning has launched into our atmosphere, becomes uh, at a point where uh, it's very hard to unwind its effects. It's one of these things where you get off to a, a slow start and the effects build over years. And um, the choices that we make today will really be playing out in decades to come. Uh, what we do know is that over and over again, as people have made estimates of what uh, the climate change effects are and then tracked them against reality, uh, reality has matched or exceeded the direst expectations. So I view uh, the importance of climate change legislation as very, very high. Uh, the other thing that we should always think of in this context, though, is that uh, this is jobs legislation. There is economic benefit for America in addressing climate change. Uh, there are very, very significant investors who have told us that the green energy uh, economy is going to be even bigger than the digital economy. And clearly other countries are making big bets that that is true. The Chinese, the Indians, the European Union countries, they are out there supporting their domestic industries to try to give them an unbeatable lead against American competition. And we have to fight back. This is a race we cannot lose. America's always been a center of initiative. We can look forward to winning this battle if our uh, forces of innovation and industry are set loose. And uh, I think we can look forward to a, a really important, what I would call a green jobs revolution, accompanying our responsible behavior with respect to our carbon pollution. Another email question from this morning comes from Judy, uh, who asks, could you please tell us what is happening in the area of wind energy off the Rhode Island coast? Good question, Judy. Uh, we had a bit of a setback recently with the Public Utilities Commission decision that uh, overruled the contract uh, that had been uh, agreed to between National Grid and uh, Deepwater Wind. Um, but the General Assembly, I'm told, is looking to try to repair that Certainly at our level, at the federal end, uh, Senator Reid and I have worked very hard to support this initiative. Uh, we supported a TIGER grant that has brought $22 million to Quonset to rebuild the uh, bulkheads and prepare that facility uh, to have the infrastructure in place uh, to become a facility for the construction of these offshore wind facilities. It's often not apparent when you see photos of offshore turbines how big they are. There's nothing really to scale them against. They just stand out against the ocean. But if you look at the pictures of the ones in the North Sea, you can probably find them just on Google, and you see a little shelf coming out the back. Uh, the shelf is a place where a helicopter lands to uh, have uh, repair uh, folks come out and uh, work on it and maintain it. So these are really big pieces of equipment. That means they can't be put on trains. They can't be put on trucks. They have to be assembled at the shore and then put on big barges and taken offshore. So a place like Quonset is well positioned not just to be a launching point for these big uh, offshore turbines for the Rhode Island area, but we could reach all the way up to Maine, all the way down to uh, Delaware and the Carolinas. It could be re really a regional center for the assembly of these, and I think it's an important uh, jobs initiative as well.